Hi friends, this is Dinero Research and welcome to my new video about Codius. Today we continue exploring smart contracts on Codius and we'll try to build something more interesting than simple uh, Hello World application. Let's quickly go through Codius contract creation process. Firstly, we need to create application code and of course test it. If everything works fine, then we convert this application into Docker image and upload this image to dockerhub.com. And finally, we create Codius manifest file and upload this file to Codius server. If you want to learn more about this process, I recommend you to watch my previous video. Basically, all smart contracts that involve payments can be split in two groups. Here is the first one. If payment received, then contract will do something. This is the way how all e-commerce applications work. If you pay for your order, then company will ship your order. And here is the second group. If something happens, then pay. This approach has many use cases in real life. For instance, that could be money refund process in e-commerce applications, like your order was not shipped, then you will get your money back. Or gambling, if your bet wins, then you will be paid. Or financial derivatives, like if price goes up or down, then you will be paid. I will show you how to create primitive e-commerce application that uses both approaches. Because we have a lot of work to do, this video will be very theoretical and I will only explain how things will work and in the next video we'll begin contract implementation. And here is our million dollar idea. XR Pizza. Pizza company that allows you to order pizza online. Once you pay for your order, XR Pizza starts delivery process. And if your order was not delivered within 30 minutes, you will get your money back. This simple logic allows us to experiment with two approaches. If we pay for pizza, then our pizza should be delivered. If pizza is not delivered within 30 minutes, then we'll get paid. Codius has multiple payment options. The greatest one is interledger protocol usage, with, which allows you to process payments in any currency or digital asset. But unfortunately, I am still learning it and will not be able to show you in this video. Thus, our Axar Pizza will accept only one digital asset as a payment option and that would be XRP. For my opinion, this simple contract model has two advantages on Codius. The first one, no one can hack XRPizza website and change payment address, because source code is not accessible from outside of the container. And the second one, if your pizza is not delivered within 30 minutes, contract guarantees that you will be paid back and there is no way to change that. Now let's look at our application's high-level architecture. Client will interact with web user interface where he can order pizza and track its delivery. On the backend, we have two models. The first one manages payments from clients and the second one manages refunds and all transactions information is stored in some database. Now let's dive deeper and look at payments model logic. When client wants to pay for his order, we'll show our XRP address, which is public key of our XRP account and destination tag. This destination tag is some randomly generated number and it allows us to link user and payment. And once address and tag are shown, we'll wait for user to pay. In the meanwhile, we'll scan XRP ledger and check for incoming transactions to our account. This process will not last forever and we'll give some limited amount of time to user to make payment. If payment received, we'll immediately start delivery. If it is not received, we'll check where the payment time expired. So let's say it would be 15 minutes to make payment. 
If it is expired, we'll cancel payment. If not, we'll go and check Ledger again and we'll go through this loop one more time. Now let's have a look at refunds model. We'll begin with delivery tracking. So model will check delivery and find out whether it is in progress or not. So if delivery is finished on time, we'll simply stop model. If it is still in progress, we'll check where the hour 30 minutes delivery time expired or not. If time has not yet expired, we'll simply go and check delivery again. If we missed our goal to deliver pizza within 30 minutes, refunds model will pay client back. To do so, firstly model will find in XRP ledger or in local database tr payment transaction. From this transaction we need, of course, amount, source address and source tag if provided. We will use this information to construct new transaction. This transaction will contain amount client paid, client's address, and as a destination tag, transaction will use source tag of the client, if it is provided, of course. Once transaction is constructed, we'll sign it with our private key and we'll send it to validator. For the sake of simplicity, We'll assume that all our transactions will be successful and there is no need to recreate them. In order to create both models, we need some developers, tools and libraries. If you want to build your application on the top of XRP Ledger, please visit developers.ripple.com where you can find everything you need. During development, we can make many mistakes with XRP payments and it is a little bit risky to use real money. For this purpose, Ripple provides us XRP testnet. It is equivalent to XRP Ledger, it has same capabilities, but it is created only for test and development purposes. Here we can generate our testnet account. Let's click Generate Credentials, and here it is. Our public key, which we'll use for receiving payments, XRP's secret key, which we'll use for signing transactions. Because it is test account, it is okay to show your secret, but please keep it safe. And finally, XRP balance. It is 10k te test XRP's. You cannot send these XRP's to anyone who is outside of the testnet. As well, you cannot send them to exchange and sell there. Also, I want to show you some XRP Ledger API functions that we will use. In order to confirm that payment is received or not, we will use transaction history function that provides list of recent transactions. Here is example of the output. As you see, it is array and we will loop through this array and we will find transaction that matches with our public key. In order to sign transaction, we'll use sign function. Here is input example. It is transaction in plain text and secret key, which is required for signing. And here is output example. This long string is our signed transaction, which will be used further for submitting to Ledger. And finally, in order to submit transaction, We'll use submit function. As input it requires signed transaction. Here it is. And if everything works fine, we'll get successful result. So engine result key will be test success and success message. Well, that's all for today. In this video we created business model for our XR pizza and defined applications architecture. In the next video, we'll begin implementation of the contract. Thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you want more videos, and leave your questions in the comment section below. Bye!